the Catholic started in Rome and basically it was to try to control Christians. And then in the 1500s, those who reformed, like Martin Luther and the rest of a few of the other guys, reformed and brought broke out of the Catholic Church and started their own church because they didn't believe the doctrines of what the Catholics were preaching and teaching. And so now today, we have, you know, Pentecostal, Assemblies of God, Lutherans, Baptists, Methodists, the list goes on and on. These are Protestant churches. These are denominational churches. And denominations are basically what man experience. Pentecostals are called Pentecostals because they experience what the apostles experienced on the day of Pentecost. So they call themselves Pentecostals. Okay? But they believe in Jesus Christ. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. Assemblies of God, same thing. Right? And so in the Catholic Church, you usually find the following. Candles, the priests in robes. You see very ritual, traditional, sometimes unnecessary chants. Uh, we see that the Catholics have uh, a leader called a Pope, and, and they believe that he is the only one who can hear from God, and they basically worship him. But you know that the Pope is a sinner just like you and me. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's right. Amen. I mean, the list goes on and on to, to see about the Catholic Church. That it takes them three, up to three years to learn the things and to, to, to go into these classes for three years before you can actually be saved, be, be confirmed. That's not what Jesus said. So if you confess with your mouth, believe within your heart, you will be saved. Yes. You can say, come, take three hours, three years of class, then you will be saved. I'm not downplaying these trips, I'm just giving you what they are. We have things like the worship of Mary, statues of Mary, where they, they, they rather worship Mary than Christ. And the list goes on and on. And then you have all these the, the, uh, Protestant churches where there are so many denominations, Seventh-day Adventists, Salvation Army, Presbyterian churches. And it causes division. It causes division. We argue about the baptism of water. We argue about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We argue about interpretation of Scripture. Communion, salvation, what can, no, this is how you get saved, no, this is how you get saved. And there, there is no unity in the church today. If I wanted to go fight a monk pastor from a different denomination, he'll ask you, what denomination are you? What's a non-denomination? Well, I can't come preach if you're not this. Why? We just want to hear the word of God. Yeah. You're a great preacher, come preach. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm going to start a reformation. We argue about hell and heaven and the, even the person of Christ. We argue about speaking in tongues. As a matter of fact, I got, I got kicked out of a, a Bible study one time. I've told this story before, but there's some people here. You know? yes. Maybe you guys don't know. I was invited to uh, a Bible study and this pastor, he was a young pastor, he was like my age, late 20. And after the Bible study and everything, he came and sat down next to me and he said, uh, how did you get saved? What happened? Share me your testimony. And I began to share my testimony and, and I told him that I got baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I began to speak in tongues. Oh, his face lit up like fireworks and he was so angry. Because he claimed he had the Holy Spirit. He doesn't need to speak in tongues. And he kicked me out. His father and the whole Bible, they all opened their Bibles and they began to point at me. Well, the scripture says this about speaking in tongues. I didn't have to open my Bible. The Holy Spirit just 
began to speak things to me. And I began to answer every persecution word, every verbal attack they had. And the pastor said, you have to get out. I was like, no problem. I got my stuff. I got my shoes. And, uh, <clears throat> never, never saw him again. If you believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus. Why do you have to kick me out? Right? So that's just a little bit of rundown of the church today. I don't have absolutely every detail of the Catholic Church and the, the denominations we see today as the Protestant churches. But some of those just a little bit. You guys all know. But let's read in the book of Acts to see what the church is supposed to look like. Turn with me to the book of Acts. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. And this is where Jesus had, God had raised Christ from the dead. He spent 40 days, 40 nights with his disciples, and he's going to ascend into heaven. And he tells the people there, and Paul says there was over 500 people that saw Christ after he died and was resurrected. And he said that some of them doubted. Beginning in verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 8, Jesus says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Amen. Amen. Woo, amen. You cannot start a church apart from the Spirit of God. That's right. Amen. Jesus says to them, He didn't say, Go and start a church and go preach. He says, Go. Do not depart until you get the promise from the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And they went and they waited and they received the Holy Spirit. And the evidence was that they began to speak with other tongues and prophesy. You cannot start a church apart from the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will be, your church will be incapable to serve Christ. You will be an ineffective preacher apart from the Holy Spirit. You skip with me to Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 37. And after they receive the Holy Spirit, Peter preaches his first message. And Peter preaches Christ crucified and resurrected. And he preached repentance. And listen to what the people say, how they answer Peter. Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Yeah. Listen to what Peter answers. Verse 38, and Peter said to them, repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. We are inviting people to church for all the wrong reasons. 
If you are not inviting your, your, your friends, your family, your relatives, whoever, 